Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for those who are close to me, they'll know that I'm absolutely tone deaf and not exactly a rock star. But uh, the other juniors out there, the other junior explorers, know that it's, uh, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. <laughs> That's uh, my cheesy line out the way. Um, Platina Resources Limited. Uh, now for something completely different. Uh, we're a quirky little company. We're in, uh, we're in Australia and uh, Greenland. And uh, Platinum Group Element Explorers. However, we have a distinct knack for uh, discovering gold at the same time, which is a nice problem to have. Now that you've all read the disclaimer, um, why invest in platina? Um, good question. Well, it's a platinum, palladium, and gold explorer. Um, focus on the precious metals, but also with most of the projects that we have, there's also associated specialty metals and base metals also. Uh, we're currently focused on two key projects in mining-friendly jurisdictions. Um, First one being Skaregard, which is our flagship project. Uh, it's a giant pre precious metal repository. Uh, it also has significant base metal credits as well, and is located in Greenland. Uh, the second project I'll talk to you about today is Owendale, uh, which is uh, a bit closer to home. It's in New South Wales, not too far away from uh, Parks and Dubbo. And uh, it's platinum and scandium, and plus base metals as well. Um, the company also has the intention of dual listing in the uh, TSX uh, next year. Uh, reason being to get, get better exposure for our project, our flagship, flagship project, uh, Scareguard, over in Greenland. Uh, certainly the, the Canadians are a bit more used to um, some of those cold Arctic climates than we are down here. And um, also the, the Platina team consists of a majority of exploration geologists. We're all explorationists at heart, and therefore we have quite a pipeline of uh, exploration projects that we hope we can certainly grow and get up to the level that uh, Scareguard and Owendale are at. Uh, this year, we've had uh, quite aggressive drilling campaigns with our two key projects, and uh, we'll be having a maiden resource calculation coming out for Owendale. Uh, work has been conducted at Owendale, for those who know it, uh, for longer than I've been born, uh, but uh, certainly it's, it's now getting a little bit of traction, and uh, we're looking at things other than the nickel and cobalt, which has been historically looked at. Uh, we're also doing a resource update to Skaregard. Uh, we are incorporating the work that uh, Platine has done there over the past four years. And uh, therefore, we think there's going to be rather strong news flow over the next 12 months. And of course, it goes without saying that management is highly experienced in the PGM and gold exploration. So the strategy going forward, number one, is uh, develop Skaregard. Uh, we hope to continue to convert the resource uh, to uh, indicated and measured resource. At the moment, it is an inferred resource, but the uh, update is coming out in about a month's time. And we certainly hope and uh, believe that we should get a little bit of uh, conversion occurring. And uh, from this point on, considering the, the, the current gold price, we certainly think that it's now time to rapidly progress the, uh, the project from advanced exploration through to uh, feasibility. Uh, at the same time, create new resources. We don't rest on our laurels. We're going to develop up mm. Owendale, get the maiden resource there, which is extremely exciting. Uh, Australia only has one historic dedicated platinum mine as the Fifield Deep Lead. Uh, Owendale is located just north of that, about 30 kilometres to the north, and uh, has the potential to be Australia's only dedicated platinum mine. And then, of course, make new discoveries as well. Um, so we uh, are looking in Greenland and Australia and uh, also elsewhere around the globe for new opportunities for precious metals. So the corporate summary. Uh, what I have here is a uh, share graph for the past five years. Um, maybe coincidence, but this is when I joined the company. And then the GFC came along. So, um, say la vie. <laughs> but uh, it's been through no lack of effort, that's for sure, on our behalf. Um, current share price is resting around about 23 cents. We have cash on hand at about 6.8 million. Market cap of about 26 million dollars. Um, in a very good cash position, we certainly believe that we have the necessary funds going forth to carry out our work programs for at least the next 12 months. Um, major shareholders, we have the top 10 are taking out about uh, almost 60%. It's a very tightly held company. We have uh, Panther Palladium as our number one. Um, this is uh, a private palladium company. Uh, effectively owned by a gentleman called Tom Kaplan, for those who know him, man out of New York. The rest are high net worth individuals that we have in the stock. Board and management. Uh, our chairman is Reg Gillard. Uh, recent claim to fame has been uh, his association with Perseus, uh, a West Africa focused uh, gold explorer. Done extremely well over there. Uh, then we have Rob Mosick is our MD. Uh, he was the former MD of Helix Resources. Cut a long story short, uh, Platina is a spin-off of uh, Helix. Uh, we took all the platinum assets out of Helix, and uh, Rob uh, moved on from Helix to, uh, to start Platina. Been around since about 2006, the IPO. 
We have Brian Moller, a lawyer, uh, enough said, but very good bloke. And uh, then we have myself, uh, exploration manager and a geologist. Skergard, um, here we are in Greenland. I rather like this photo. Uh, when people think of Greenland, including myself, I don't think of seeing bare rock, I think of seeing ice, ice and more ice. But uh, we're situated right on the coast and we're actually the closest point to Iceland. So we uh, benefit from the luxuriously mild climate uh, being there, um, so it's, uh, it's a good location to be. Um, <laughs> and also logistically being next door to Iceland, it certainly helps a lot. Um, here's a location map slash geo map. This is the Skergard project on the east coast of Greenland. 420 kilometers away we have Iceland, um, population of about 350,000, whereas Greenland has about 55,000. So being close to Iceland and being able to benefit from the logistics of that country is, is an awfully big help. Um, also, what is it, the company's own, uh, the project's owned 100% by Platina Resources. Uh, we've done two years worth of environmental baseline studies. Uh, to date, they've found, found no fatal flaws and we have no environmental concerns. We've done two years worth of environmental baseline studies. There appear to be no uh, fatal flaws with the project. And uh, the average uh, temperature during the winter time is about minus 10 during summer, 2 degrees. For those of you who've been to Toronto in the winter time, it's a lot better than uh, Toronto is at winter time, that's, that's for sure. Now then, with the resource table, it is uh, quite a vast resource. The overall resource is the combined zone here, 1.5 billion tonnes, which has total resource of uh, just over 10 million ounces of gold, just over 29 million ounces of palladium, and 2 million ounces of platinum. Uh, now, within this, there are two uh, high-grade zones, uh, the gold zone and the palladium zone. These could be thought of as being analogous to the, uh, the Bushveld complex with the Marinsky Reef and the UG2. They are two planar reefs that uh, start at surface and then go down to the bowels of the earth. Uh, with, our current, with our past scoping study that was done in 2009 by GRD Minproc, uh, we found that the gold zone was economically viable and that's where our f efforts have been focused. So 107 million tonnes, which gives us just under 6 million ounces of gold. Uh, what we're doing at the moment is we're doing a uh, resource update. We've got AMEC in Toronto doing that, and uh, we're expecting the results of that to come out in about a month's time. Uh, that's going to incorporate the past uh, four years' work done by Platina. So fingers crossed we can get a resource upgrade, and, uh, and also having a bit more of a cursory glance at the palladium zone, perhaps with the increase in the palladium price over the past three years, uh, that may become economically attractive as well. This is Skergard, uh, the, the black line. Uh, demarks the, uh, demarcates the uh, intrusion outline. It's a layered uh, mafic intrusion, consists of gabbro. Uh, we have the white line here, that is the outcropping mineralization. So mineralization occurs everywhere south of that. And from here, it dips down at 20 degrees to the south, and the, uh, the yellow dots represent historic drill holes, the green ones represent uh, what we achieved this, uh, this field season. Uh, the mineralization is quite unique at Skergard. Uh, it cannot be compared to the Bushveld. Bushveld, you have uh, chromites. Here, it's uh, very discreet, and it's within the, the gabbros. Uh, most of the mineralization is in the form of alloys, uh, so we're looking at very low sulfur content, uh, which is certainly good from a tailings perspective. And uh, yes, about eight kilometers worth of outcropping mineralization, and uh, over 30,000 meters of drilling conducted uh, thus far. In 2009, we did quite significant uh, levels of uh, metallurgical uh, test work, uh, bench scale testing. And what we found is that with the unique mineralogy that we have at Skergard, they're getting excellent recoveries of gold and also palladium using strictly flotation. Uh, so what's uh, going on from that downstream? We found that if we were to do a small leach circuit on site, we could produce bullion uh, at, on site at Skergard, um, Dore bars. This for Greenland is incredibly important. Um, with the sea ice as it is there, uh, we only have a shipping window of about four months a year. Therefore, in Greenland, we think it's imperative that you have a small, uh, valuable, saleable product that you can fly out on a year-round basis. We can certainly do that with these Dore bars, whereas if we were reliant on a bulk commodity, then uh, we would have be reliant on the shipping window to generate cash flow. So what we have going on is we have the resource update in process. Uh, we uh, believe this will be done hopefully in the next month, fingers crossed. Uh, immediately after that, we'll be going straight into updated uh, project economics in the form of a scoping study. Uh, we did 3,500 metres worth of drilling this year. Uh, we intend to do more next year. We also collected one tonne of material for uh, uh, metallurgical test work. And uh, yes, next year it'll be bigger and better, we believe. Now, uh, <laughs> Owendale, closer to home. 
you may notice a stark difference to Skagon. And it's quite interesting going here after spending a field season in Greenland and then coming back to uh, reality. And uh, Owendale, located near uh, by two parks uh, in Dubbo. It's, uh, it's on pastoral ground. And uh, here we have a, a regional map of New South Wales. Uh, the location for the uh, Owendale project here. There's parks, there's Dubbo. And uh, what we've done is we've also pegged another four license uh, areas within New South Wales. These are all very analogous to what we found at Owendale. Uh, we believe we've been quite successful at Owendale over the past year. And what we're doing is we've learned from our experience and we've pegged other ultramafic intru intrusions which have very similar hallmarks to Owendale. And so we can build on our success that we've had. So zooming in, as you can see, relatively flat pastoral ground here. And with Owendale, very basic geology. You have the ultramafic here in the purple and then the mafic in the green. And we focused uh, on these areas here. We have four prospects that uh, we focused on. These were all uh, identified by Helix Resources, um, but uh, regrettably the, the drilling we could not incorporate into a resource. So we've gone out and we've drilled out the areas that have been identified as being high-grade platinum areas. And uh, so we've got the maiden, re maiden resource calculation being done by Snowden at the moment. Uh, that will come out in about a month's time. And uh, that will include platinum and scandium in the resource calculation. Scandium is one of those uh, funny metals that uh, you need to find a market for it. So uh, we're not resting on our laurels with scandium. Uh, we're doing the pro project economics based purely on the platinum. We certainly think that with the grades that we're getting, uh, the, the shallow mineralization, that uh, we can sustain a mining operation based on platinum alone. And uh, if someone wants to buy uh, scandium off us, by all means, uh, I'm all ears uh, if you'd like to talk about it. Um, now then, uh, with this particular one, it's a laterite that we're focusing on at the moment. Um, however, we're also uh, looking at the primary mineralization at depth. We've done a couple of deep diamond drill holes, and what we found is that uh, in, uh, we've come across some uh, sulfides at depth, and these have had fantastic grades for platinum and uh, copper as well. So at Owendale North, the area that we spent most of our time working on, uh, next month we're doing an EM and IP survey, and that's to identify uh, further sulfides, and hopefully this time uh, massive sulfides. And we know that the tenor of these sulfides is, is very high tenor, and we could expect magnificent platinum grades so long as the sulfides are there. Uh, with the laterites, as well as the resource calc, we also have mineralogy and metallurgical test work underway. Uh, we know that uh, the mineralogy of the laterite, the platinum there, it's uh, majority isoferroplatinum, so which is a platinum iron alloy. And therefore, we hope that from a process point of view, that we'll be able to separate most of the platinum out using the gravity method. And then perhaps from a mining operation, we then sell off concentrate after that. Being a laterite as well, and uh, mineralization starting at surface and then going down to about 50 meters depth, uh, we, it'll be quite free digging. So uh, hopefully the mining costs will also be quite cheap. Um, emphasizing that uh, we're quite excited about this because Australia has uh, at the present uh, no dedicated uh, platinum mine. Uh, there's only been one in history, uh, which is about 30 kilometers to the south of us. That was an alluvial deposit. And uh, so certainly we, uh, we'd like to think that uh, we could perhaps fetch a free, uh, premium for the platinum that we're producing as well. It'd be quite nice to think that the Perth Mint, instead of using South African platinum for their coins, they could use something from our own backyard. Uh, this is uh, in a gravity image of the ultramafic uh, portion. We did this uh, ground-borne gravity survey this year. And uh, the reason for doing it is that it's a magnificent proxy for finding more prospective rocks for, ultra, uh, for, sorry, for platinum. The, the purple here are gravity lows, and what they represent very clearly is uh, dunite intrusions. The rest of the rock we're looking at is peroxinite, and so it's the dunites that are prospective for the uh, platinum. So with our uh, prospects thus far, Owendale North, which is where we're getting the, some of the best grades for platinum, it's associated with the dunite intrusion, so the laterite above the dunite. Uh, Box Cal, it also seems to be somewhat linked to, um, uh, to Owendale North. Cincinnati, uh, the gravity doesn't show it up here, but we know that there are dynatic, uh, thin dynatic um, uh, dikes there. And uh, so what uh, we've got is we've got a number of uh, dunites that have not received any work. So we ha certainly have numerous other prospects that we, can, uh, that we will be drilling on to further expand on our tonnage for the, uh, for the platinum. The, uh, the scandium, on the other hand, seems to be associated with the pyroxenites. And so at Owendale North and at Cincinnati, we're getting an awful lot of uh, scandium mineralization. It's very high grade. Uh, we're getting up to, uh, in the order of uh, high 700 odd gram per ton scandium. Uh, we like to think that uh, when the resource comes out, we're going to have one of, if not the highest, uh, scandium resource. Uh, but once again, it's a bit of a marketing exercise, and uh, scandium's 
Let's put it in perspective, scandium is something that uh, is, uh, at the moment, is mostly used with uh, alloys, with aluminium. It's the best alloying agent with aluminium. So those Russian fighter jets that are out there, they use scandium. Uh, it's also used in uh, solid oxide fuel cells as well. And it's used in high-end sporting equipment, so alloys for bicycle frames and for baseball bats and so on and so forth. Uh, current production uh, in, is in the realm of about uh, five tons per annum scandium oxide between five and ten. Uh, but five and ten. Uh, if we went into production with what I think we're going to have, we'd probably do that in a week. <laughs> so we need to get the uh, world to, conv uh, to convert across to using uh, scandium a little bit more than they presently are. But uh, we like to think that uh, it's currently not being used because it's not out there. Um, so perhaps we can uh, provide it. Um, what else? With the, yes, the IP EM survey that'll be coming out next month, uh, results of that will be coming out before Christmas. And uh, that's that one. This is a uh, cross-section of, uh, cross of uh, Owendale North. And what we typically see, and so what we have here in the red, this is the mineralized laterite. We have surface here, and uh, we've got the scale here. It goes down to about 50 meters is the bottom of uh, the, uh, the laterite profile. And what we see is markedly consistent uh, platinum grades. So here we have 12 meters at 0.8 platinum, 20 meters at 0.9 platinum, 32 meters at 1 gram platinum, 15 at 1.5, and 12 at 0.8. Uh, it's very encouraging from a mining point of view that we're having consistent mineralization. There was one concern that we might have a somewhat nuggety platinum or it might be uh, um, uh, erratic, but uh, certainly from what we've done thus far, that doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, and also the same for the scandium as well. Whilst I haven't got it in this table, the scandium is markedly consistent as well. Uh, hangs together nicely. Um, well, that was it. So um, thanks very much.